My name is Raghav and I want to talk about Gunjan Saxena the Kargil girl which first of all what is this title the Kargil girl this is already a red flag I've never seen a more patronizing and pandering title than this one Anyway uh, Gunjan Saxena is an Indian Hindi language biopic on the life of Indian Air Force pilot Gunjan Saxena who's the first Indian female Air Force pilot in combat The level of authenticity in the story and the portrayal of both the main character and the Indian Air Force is Eh, pretty questionable as even the filmmakers admit that they took extensive creative liberties to dramatize the film and this is so evident in the treatment of this movie a lot of the scenes feel incredibly forced and unrealistic a feeling that exponentially heightens by the end of the film having said that this is not an out and out bad movie the overall writing is good and keeps you engaged gunjan saxena's journey is both interesting and endearing and the supporting cast is strong making for a watchable if faltering picture note that i specified the supporting cast because this is a biopic which means the whole film needs to be carried by the protagonist and this is especially the case for this movie because the story is presented as her against the world unfortunately janvi kapoor who plays gunjan saxena is not up for this challenge she is barely holding it together in this movie and no matter how strong the visuals the writing or the actors around her are She sticks out like a sore thumb. Her performance is weak and uninspired, not to mention it looks like she's put no work into the physicality of the character. There's a scene where she has to run from one end of the campus to the other in order to get to the tarmac on time, and she's flailing about like one of those inflatable balloon dudes you see outside a car dealership. It, th- th- this is supposed to be after her military training, so where's her form? It totally takes you out of the movie uh, to see her simply not be able to embody the physicality of a military officer. Not to mention that her characterization is really weird. For some reason, she's super, super dim. more and soft spoken to the point of being submissive almost i mean i understand that there's a value in showing vulnerability and nervousness when it's about a lone woman braving a male dominated profession i get that but this girl is playing it like she's such a pushover and when you see footage of the real gunjan saxena it doesn't really come across that way Sure she may have been soft spoken but she's stoic she's got poise she's got a quiet and understated confidence the difference here is like the disparity between Ginny Weasley from the books and the movies one is the epitome of cool and the other i don't know ties harry's shoelaces for him i i don't i, I can't even get into this right now anyway the rest of the cast for the most part is pretty strong which sucks considering they're mostly male but that's what you get when your feminist film is written directed produced edited shot and scored by men pankaj tripathi shines he's the flag bearer for gender equality and the empowerment of women he plays his role with honesty and an almost childlike passion it totally works he's super charming and incredibly watchable no criticism there he's great the rest of the male cast for the most part is also strong the whole ma- male led unit that gunjan is trying to be a part of all play their oversized male egos and toxic masculinity efficiently and it serves the story well angad bedi who plays the role of gunjan's inexplicably misogynist brother is Okay, it's a very one-note character with no depth, so it's very hard to understand where he's coming from. Although, Janvi Kapoor's performance, in my opinion, makes Gunjan come across as a victim, like weak and whiny and kind of spoiled. So her brother's total disdain for her kind of makes sense in that context. It's not very clear though. There's a, there's also some just. I don't know technical weirdness in the movie like she's stationed in Udhampur which is in Jammu and Kashmir and her parents live in Lucknow which is in Uttar Pradesh and she goes home by bus it's like a 24 hour drive god knows how long it takes by bus and it looks like she's making it there in like 2 minutes i don't know you got to figure this stuff out you know that kind of teleporting didn't even work in game of thrones and that show had dragons in it there's also major pacing issues in the final act of the movie first of all if you're going to do that thing where we start the movie in the middle of the story then we do a flashback to the beginning and show the whole story and get to that moment right at the end to show how far the character has come great do it have fun i love it You don't have to repeat the scene shot for shot. I've already seen it. It's so unnecessary. I know what happened in that scene. You opened with it. I don't need to see it again. <sighs> also, there's a scene where she gets shot at by a bazooka while in the air. And when she sees it, the camera stops on her face for like a full minute before she dodges it, and that's ridiculous and obviously not realistic. I mean, the whole appeal of military action is that is that that stuff is fast-paced. 
you know, courage under pressure, split second decisions, show me how good she is at making a good call quickly without even breaking a sweat. That's what makes the army so cool. There's wasted opportunities like this everywhere in the movie. The best parts of the film are the pursuit of becoming a pilot. From the beginning of her trying out for the army to her military training <clears throat> and her dealing with the environment in the IAF itself, all that stuff is great and super interesting, but everything around that is boring, long, heavy-handed and ham-fisted. Also the music. The music in this movie is atrocious. Every time there is a montage, they have to stretch it for two minutes so they can show off their soundtrack. And none of the songs are particularly good, nor are they appropriate. It feels so forced. It's like the opposite of a palate cleanser. Like there's a few really good scenes that work on their own and they're surrounded by horrible boring sounds just to ruin the taste. There's some great straightforward, technically sound and super interesting Air Force stuff that feels really natural and grounded and realistic. And it's beautifully shot and well executed and it feels like you're really experiencing a military base with its discipline and the looming threat of danger. And if the whole movie could have kept up that pace and treatment, it could have been a really good movie. If you cut around all the fluff and drama in the copious montage sequences, there's a decent film in there. You just gotta find it.